First of all, please don't drag me. I was rushing this morning and somehow put on mixed match eyelashes. So if I look a little cross-eyed, if it's giving short bus or whatnot, let me live. Because I don't be saying nothing when y'all don't have edges and when y'all wigs be crunchy, even though mine is as well. So. Well, darling, there's only one God. Darling, there's only Welcome to the Dirty Bag Podcast. I'm your host, Cookie. And as always, thank you for rocking out with me. You can be anywhere, listening to anybody, but you know better because you know I'm the best, so you came to the right place. So, <laughs> you know I got to pop it every once in a while and remind y'all what it is, right? This episode is sponsored by Red Passage Productions, where faith-driven artistry meets exceptional media. They specialize in narrative film, event captures, and impactful commercial work, all designed to inspire and resonate deeply. If you're looking for high-quality audio and visuals, contact them at www.redpassageproductions.com. Today, we're going to do a little something different. I know I've got some new listeners here, so I think it's always a good opportunity, never a bad time to reintroduce myself as many times as I need to because I'm every 60 days, I'm a new chick. So you need to evolve with me and know what's going on. So I'm kind of in the hot seat a little bit today. I have no idea what's going to be thrown at me. I don't know. I just know if someone wanted to know things about me, I give them full reign. So um, that's what we're doing today. And you're behind the camera, but you can say hi. What up? <laughs> Tell them your name. <laughs> Will Robinson. What do you do, Will? All right. Y'all hear that sternness in his voice? So we're going to see if he's nice to me because he's also a man of God. And I'm, I'm a little ratchet. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm just. I'm not in control today. So I'm going to let you. Uh, you can go ahead now. Go ahead. <laughs> what would you like to know? Where are you? I am from North St. Louis. I come from the trenches, y'all. So I grew up in two different areas in St. Louis. Walnut Park, which shoot out with the cops was normal, late 80s, you know, but I had the best of times, and it was the worst of times. But when you're young, you don't realize it's poverty and crime stricken. And the second half of my childhood was in an area called Baden. It felt like the mini suburbs, but it also got hood real quick because folks began migrating. So I, I lived in like some of the worst parts of St. Louis, but it gave me the best memories of my life. And it quite frankly is, I mean, why I am who I am because of those areas. So yeah, I'm a I'm a hood chick with boy room manners. <laughs> so you to the fire on your head. Going to sleep to the sound of um, you know, gunshots as a lullaby. I house got shot through once while we was watching Rule of Fortune, and you just kind of ducked and got up. And I was like six, so I'm not moved by a whole lot. I don't know what to say. Just been through some things. <laughs> so your name is, your real name is Cookie. No, my real name is, uh, you can't have me put my government out there. My real name is Ariel, y'all. I'm actually the original mermaid with the U, but you know, I'm from St. Louis, so you got them grandmas. Everybody gets a nickname from the time you're a baby, and it just carries you through life. So I've always been Cookie. I get these little comments like, you know, like Cookie Lion? No, I'm original, circa 82. Uh, my, my grandma called me Cookie. That's what you call me. So I think it has something to do with my freckles also that I keep covered up. But, yeah, it's Cookie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I went to college. I had to get out. The minute I graduated high school, it was up. St. Louis is one of them places. And I don't dog my city because I, I will fight anybody talking crazy to St. Louis. But when you're trying to move up, you got to get out. And I knew for the situation I was in, I was young, didn't necessarily have a whole lot of guidance. Like my mom had passed, grandma had passed, and my grandfather was really doing the best he could. I knew if I wanted a chance in life, I was going to have to leave home. So I ended up heading down to Joplin, Missouri, which is four hours south of St. Louis. Very small hick town. Backwards is all get out. But leaving home changed my life. I was 19. So, yeah, I've been out the crib since I was 19. I've been grown for a long time. So when you were at Joplin, what did you go from there? 
I got into corporate in Joplin. Took a few years after college, so I ended up getting into sales. And my first big girl job was Enterprise. Enterprise is one of them companies where in order for you to move up, you have to move out. That's the only way you're going to get promoted. I let these folks talk me into selling cars for Enterprise. So I was comfortable in my little role, you know, making 40000 a year plus commission in like 2010 in a small town where your rent is like 400 a month. That's some good money. But they kind of convinced me that I needed to move to Kansas to help open up this car lot because Enterprise does sell cars. And I packed up my son. He was like in third grade. And we, yeah, I ended up in Wichita, Kansas. And knew within the first 60 days, this wasn't it. But I commit to the process. So I'm like, I already moved here. We got to make it work. It was hell. I hated it so much. And I, Kansas is like one of the memories I try to forget. <laughs> no offense to y'all, but... My time there was not great, and I stayed for a while because I ended up coming on with Coca-Cola. They made me an offer I couldn't refuse. I'm like, all right, so here's some money, some consistent money, and I get to have this little nice little role. I get to go in restaurants and bars and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I, I have spent a lot of my adulthood in small towns because of my career. Sales will have you working in the nooks and crannets of America. <laughs> You want to learn about racism. Work in sales in some small towns. You're going to get an experience and some trauma. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. That's a lot of all of that that brought you to where you are. COVID. Well, I, uh, you know what? I got introduced to Dallas through women's basketball. So a friend of mine, like a childhood school friend, she was one of the assistant coaches for Mississippi State. Back in 2017, they had a historic year, made the Final Four. So during March Madness, I was chasing them. Wherever they won a game from Oklahoma City, I would drive to their games. One of the games ended up being in Dallas. I visited Dallas once some years back for a job interview, but I never got to explore the city. So while me and my son were down here, I was like, hold on, this is nice. Like, I like it here, and I had a bestie that already lived here. So I didn't know from that visit that I was going to move here. But when COVID hit, um, I had my daughter. My role at Coca-Cola, which was me being in bars and restaurants all day long, finding new business, when COVID hit, we was on lockdown. So I went from finding new business to calling businesses trying to get invoices paid. And you got to imagine what it is. We don't know what's going on with the world. We... We don't know when it's going to open back up. We don't know what our futures look like. I said, I'm tired of this job, the microaggressions. I'm the only black girl in this role, one of few black girls in the company. Like, I am exhausted. I'm tired of this. I'm not valued. If I don't make a move now, wow, we don't know what's going on. I'm never going to do it. So I decided, like, in August, I'm going to make a move. Started driving to Dallas every weekend. And, like, October 31st, I was out. I quit my job while everybody was getting furloughed. I was like, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to take my savings. I'm going to take 10 grand. I'm moving to Dallas. And I had already kind of been in the works of building a podcast. So I really launched this joker like three weeks after I moved here. I was doing some crazy stuff. It, I just, Jim and I just be out here doing shit. <laughs> we don't even be thinking things through. If we feeling it, we're going to do it. But it was a dope move because... Here we are. I've been talking for a lot. I mean, I went to school. My degree is in mass communications journalism. So I was actually a award winning, award winning collegiate journalist. I won best news story in 2006. So I'd always wrote and I always used my voice, but I think I felt stifled in my sales career that I never wanted to be in sales. So when you're in a career that is, it's not fulfilling, even though I was performing at a high level, I'm like, I just want to pop my shit. But what ended up happening was 2014, when the movement popped off out of Ferguson, so I'm going home and protesting every weekend, six and a half hours, going live, telling everybody what's going on versus what CNN is showing, the, you know, depicting a black man out here in these streets, simply asking to live. I'm dealing with that, then I'm coming back to Kansas listening to people in the accounts talk about these thugs and just dealing with all the mess that comes with being the first black person, first black female in your role. 
And I would have these conversations on the phone with my friends who were fellow activists, and I would often say, like, yo, these conversations kind of need to be recorded. I never thought podcasts. I didn't like podcasters. I didn't want no podcasts. But as people would say to me, you should start a podcast. I'm like, I guess eventually I got to put these thoughts somewhere. I'm going live all day while I'm at work. Just so folks would know what small town I'm in in case they hang me from a tree. You need to know where I'm at. So it was really, it came out of safety and just needing a place to, an outlet. So after like three or four years of playing around with the idea, not wanting to do it, doing 10, 15 stories on IG back to back. That's a long time for an audience to click and click. So I finally did it. So I did it because the people asked me to. It was not my choice. I just know I like talking and giving people space to tell their stories. So I did this pull, uh, kicking and screaming. <laughs> I did this kicking and screaming. This is why I make the joke that I don't like podcasters. I, I like seven of y'all. <laughs> seven. Funny thing is that wasn't even the original name. The original name was Sticky Notes. That came from me putting a bunch of sticky notes on my wall. It was like maybe 90, and I had different topics that if I ever did a thing, this is what we would discuss. So it started out like social justice-based, like all the topics were related to activists that I felt were not getting the shine or that wasn't being highlighted on social media. People that I felt were the truth tellers that were the ones on the ground. So that's the direction it was originally going to take with a little bit of corporate in my dating life sprinkled in. But right before I moved here, I was in the bathroom one day putting my makeup on. And actually, it was Dirty Purse. It was going to be Dirty Purse. The name was taken. And then it, and I'm glad it was because that's not, you know, this isn't gender inclusive. But it was not me. I'm going to tell y'all, it was God put this on me. It was going to be sticky notes. I did a whole photo shoot. I was naked on the toilet with a laptop, and it was going to be sticky notes. So at the last minute, the name changed. This is how I know I'm called to do it, because I would have never came up with no mess like this. But Dirty Mad Bag is a metaphor for unpacking our mess. And that's the vision that came to me as I was doing my little ghetto wing liner. I was like, oh, dirty? Oh, OK. We're going to rock it out. So when that still small voice tells you to do something, Go with it. So how much of your mess is going to come out? How much of you is going to talk about? Oh, I put everything out. Season one was a me Season one, I was still going through postpartum, right? It was the pandemic, so we were still on lockdown. So when you and I, when you were in the crib for months, I had a lot to say. There was um, one episode, Cookie's Diary. I literally pulled out a journal that I've had for years. And this is what happens when you drink and pod. I was literally at a, at a restaurant, two doors down. I drank so much, I went to the car, popped the trunk, and took that journal out. It wasn't planned. So a lot of my life is on the earlier episodes. That's why I always find lurkers hilarious, because it's like anything you want to know about me, is, it's really on the episode. And I think that's why, that's why I do solos. And that's why I'm big on people telling their story before you ask somebody to come on your platform and be vulnerable. How can I trust you if I don't know a damn thing about you? And a lot of folks do that. So I'm vulnerable first. A lot of my mess is season one. <laughs> Woo, I can drop some tea on myself. You got to go back. <laughs> so a lot. As I evolve, I have to share it because it's, it's, it's also cathartic for me. So I talk a lot about my business. Yeah. Okay, so it's kind of backtracking at this point. So a lot of the guests that I have on, they discuss their entrepreneurial journeys, the behind the scenes, right? What I learned is I was rushing into season two, like we've healed now, we're outside, we're good again. But when you've been on lockdown that long and then you come back into normal life, you're adjusting to a new normal. So what I learned real quick is like, and I said this before, folks still going through it. Like life just changed so abruptly for us. So we trying to all pretend like we're okay because we're back outside again and we can, but a lot of things, we had to face a lot of demons, I feel like, being at home, and being shut off from your loved ones. So now it's like people still trying to figure it out and the economy is in shambles. It's expensive to breathe. So now it's like we're taking a step back like, okay, we're back outside again. We're back to normal life, but are you really okay? And I learned that a lot of us aren't. And our a lot of our relationships changed. 
you know, people didn't get checked on and took it personally. Some people came out of the pandemic and just hit the ground running and excelled. Some people came out of the pandemic and found that they were still struggling to find their purpose now that life has changed for them. So it's, it's, we're still going to be unpacking our bag, but it's like, how are we, can we get more honest about how dirty our bag really is, even though we're supposed to be okay right now? We're not. We're still going through it, and people are still putting on masks. Doesn't work. <laughs> Don't work. I would say that I'm always surprised by my guest. I never expect the conversation to go as deep as it does sometimes. Now, first of all, I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm just good at what I do. Let me, when people hit me up saying, I want to collab, I'm like, do you? Do you? Do you know what's going to happen when you sit across from me? I don't care what podcast you was on before you came here. It's going to get real. I'm not even going to ask you a lot of questions. I'm going to set the mood. I'm going to set the atmosphere, the tone, and you're going to do what you don't expect. So I learned that people tend to share a lot of their traumas with me. I'm not saying they don't do it with everybody else, but I have a way of making you dig a little bit deeper about why it happened, what you learned from it. I've heard a couple of, I, I ain't told this, to, this story to nobody yet, or I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. Baby, it's the dirty bag. What you mean? Believe you're going to say it out loud. It's going to happen. So I have to brace myself for the information that I'm going to receive from that person and what I do with those stories, what type of space I hold. Because when we get done recording, the episode doesn't, the episode stops for y'all. It gets real we stop recording. We talk for a good 30, 40 minutes average afterwards. Because now there's a, we can open these wounds. We got to kind of talk through it a little bit. So I, I feel a lot of responsibility with my guests because I, I don't want to come off of somebody that just wants your story for clicks and views. This is to help somebody else out, but you talking about it might heal you as well. So the masks come off with me. The, the masks are going to come off. That's why I like people to think long and hard before they ask to come on here, because I don't do notes, so you don't know what I'm going to throw at you. I'm going to watch your facial expressions. I'm going to watch how you answer a certain question. I'm going to look at how you, when you give me an in and open it, and I'm going to take it and run with it. I would do us both a disservice if I didn't. I'm just saying. <laughs> Still ratchet, but I'm going to get it out of you. <laughs> Well, this is the Dirty Bag Podcast. So Y'all know where to go. Dirty Bag Podcast, TikTok, Spotify, Apple, Google, Instagram. I'm just, I'm out here in these streets. But most importantly, we got a live show coming June 5th. If you really want to see me, you need to come to Berkshire Wine Lounge June 5th, 1110 South Acker downtown. We gonna, I'm bringing in some people that have cleaned out their dirty bag on the show. There's going to be some newbies. And we're going to give you a live experience of what unpacking looks like, a raw conversation, and just good vibes where you can be yourself. Too many of y'all ain't being y'all self. Y'all, you mask things very well, and I'm tired of it. That's why I want you to come sit with me so I can uh, get up in there. <laughs> get up in there. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I ain't had a cute enough guest for it to be disturbing yet. I ain't, I need to get more men on here. I don't have a lot of men that come on. Men reject coming on. They don't reject coming on. They want to come argue 50-50, and we ain't doing that because why? Can we make it past McDonald's? <laughs> Can we make it out the chat, out the DMs? Okay. Yeah. Have you made any connections within Dallas? I made a lot of connections. Dallas is very much a who's who town. Like for the most part, people like to be connected to folks that's popping. You'll see it a lot. When they figure out who's who, they'll go to the events, make sure to get some selfies, comment, you know, boost their posts and all that stuff, which nothing is wrong with that. But somebody like myself, I do, I love genuine relationships. I like the type of connections that we can meet up for lunch and we can actually put our phones down. We don't need the ring lights. I like those kind of relationships where let's say I wasn't doing an episode or I, I wasn't growing the way I am. Would you still rock with me? So 
Connecting with people is easy, but maintaining those real authentic connections and rocking with each other based off character, that's different. <laughs> Dallas, you're going to have to earn it. But it's sorting through who's in alignment with you. I almost linked up with a, um, somebody that was scamming folks. So you got to vet people as well. So I think you need to treat connecting with people in Dallas the same way you would dating. Like, there has to be a process. You have to get to know people before you just go signing off on everybody, putting your stamp, and vice versa. So it's a process. Coming to the right events, rubbing elbows, but what are you really about and what does this look like long term? It's a different conversation. And with me, if I get a bad vibe, I'll leave your ass alone. It's something I'm working on. I, good God, I didn't dealt with some janky people. I didn't dealt with some folks that have tried to play in my face. So I, I, I think that comes from a place of trauma. So I have to sit back like, okay, maybe they didn't mean it that way. Maybe they really were trying to help. They wasn't fucking with you. So it's a process. <laughs> Building connections is a process. <laughs> oh, I'm a mama's mama. Yes, I have an adult and a youngin. I have a four-year-old. She's a studio kid. Uh, my top downloaded episode is F. We're not going to use the word. It's F these kids circa December 2020. That's to date. No episode has downloaded more than that one. So it was about me being a mom, and I did it with um, Dope Moms Unfiltered Podcast, who they're not together no more, and I hate that because they was dope. But it was the episode, again, we own, we're still kind of on lockdown. So that was the rawest I got about motherhood. I've been a mother young, and, you know, I've been a mother in my season age, so I'm able to give two different perspectives on motherhood from two different stages in my life. And I love that because I see these new moms, their babies are two seconds old trying to give advice and build communities. Girl, if you don't get through postpartum first, you ain't even, you ain't even scratched the surface of motherhood. Please stop trying to give advice because y'all done gave birth and now you think you know. Them first two years, that ain't nothing. You, you have no clue. When you didn't watch a child go through every phase of life, let's get through the newborn stage, the toddler stage, the young kid stage, puberty, young adulthood. When you didn't got through them stages, now we can have a conversation about motherhood. I can't take advice from nobody that ain't at least got somebody to puberty because you don't know, sis. You've been a, you're going to become so, different, so many different versions of yourself. You ain't going to even listen to the person that's giving advice when your child is under five years. Please just, it's like a job and a profession. Get, get some meat on that bone first because y'all don't be knowing what y'all talking about. And now y'all are content creators. What, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> it's annoying. If I knew then what I knew now, when my son was four or five, even four or five months, I would have just shut the hell up, sat, ate my food, and learned something about parenting. Sorry. <laughs> I want y'all to know that I do this because of y'all. Um, podcasting is work. It is. And to anybody that's thinking about starting one, I want you to think about your why. Your why is what's going to carry you on them days where you don't feel like talking. You don't feel like anybody's listening. Like having somebody's ear, and I had a, a guest say this once, it's a very intimate space. If you're coming into this space because it's the thing to do and everybody's doing it, please reconsider. We don't need no more bad podcasts. But as far as my guests, I want you to, I mean, my listeners, I want you to know that I'm evolving and I'm turning into a different person every season, maybe every three to six months. So sometimes I might have to dip off from y'all a little bit to recharge and it's okay. And I hope that you dip off and recharge from the world as well. It's okay to take breaks. It's okay to be imperfect and don't compare yourself to folks on social media because it's all fake. As I'm in this creative world and I meet creatives and I learn what they going through behind the scenes, I learn a lot of this it's a front. So for that reason, please do not compare yourself to these people. They're trying to survive just like you. We all just trying to figure it out. <laughs> all of us, even the ones that look picture perfect and have picture perfect content. Life gone life, we all in these grown folk trenches. Like dead ass. <laughs> for real. So 
Hopefully that got that that answers some questions you guys may have had, maybe give you a little bit more insight to who I am. So I hear there's a new variant of COVID or something coming out. I don't know. So that's why this closed line will never change. This closing line will never change. Whatever we got going on right now, wear applicable, wear your mask, wash your hands, socially distance. And when you get a free moment, please remember to clean out your dirty bag. Till next time. Well, darling, there's only one God. Darling, there's only one God.